Haven't got a new calculator in a while. Not too well. I'm shaking around in here. Get this open. There it is, the Merchant XL Pinwheel. And everything's jammed. Yeah. Alright, let's take this apart. So the only thing that works is this, which is the clearing handle for the accumulator. If I put something in there, well, it sort of works. Sort of works. Everything else is jammed. This is the clearing handle for the counter. This is the main machine crank. Carriage is jammed. And all the setting things are jammed. So I took out four screws, two in the back and then two in the front. But these things are holding it on. And it's actually a pretty cool idea. They made little slots here so that number one you can see the number in there. And number two, you could just slide this down and lift, and then these things will line up with the slots. You can lift the cover off. But since they're jammed, I can't do that. So we're gonna have to pull all of these little handles off here. All right, all the handles off. Let's see if this will lift off now. Oops, that's so in the way. Okay. And looks like that's going to require four screws, so I'll pause for that. And I got that off. That's the clearing handle to push all these back up when you want to clear it. Um, just a nice felt under it so it doesn't snap back down. This is spring loaded. Alright, let's try again. Okay. Now we're in here. Let's see if we can see what's stuck. So. Looks like the machine is in mid cycle. Is that what's stuck? No. Looks like it might be this mechanism down here. I don't see that moving at all. Although that might not move for the whole cycle. That might be the problem. Yeah, let me see if I can figure out how to disassemble this further. Right, let's see if this side will come off now. Maybe. Got all the screws out of it, I think. Yeah. Should be anything holding that now. Well, let me take a look at it. Okay, so I got it moving now. The problem was that wheel back there had expanded and jammed itself against the counter up here. I managed to break a few pieces of it out. 
this is obviously not going to work anyway. I mean, that wheel, all that wheel is for is the counter drum. So just without that wheel, the first position in the counter here isn't going to count. I'm not. Actually, that one might just be for 10's carry. I'm not entirely sure. I have to check into that. It's either for 10's carry or for counting. And it just affects this first position here. So I'm not really going to be too concerned about it. Um, they wouldn't work in that state anyway because these little levers are what move back and forth to engage the or to affect the tens carry and they were stuck in place because the pot metal had expanded. So I um, managed to chip that out to get this moving and the reason I had to get it moving is because um, the carriage was stuck in place. Actually it's still stuck in place. Oh it moves. Stiff but um, the carriage was stuck in place because the machine was halfway through a cycle and I think in order to get the side off, you have to take the carriage off and lift this carriage plate up. It looked, because I took all the screws out of this side and it's still solid in there. So I think this plate here, this plate here must have pins that go down into this here. So you can't just slide it out. You actually have to lift this off and then pull that out, I think. Um, regardless, this, it is moving now. Um, I would still like to see if I could get the carriage off to get that apart so I could clean the rest of that pot metal out of there so that this moves smoother. Um, that works. Does this work? Yeah, that works. This is this would this is not in the right place. I'm, I don't have the space on right now. So let's see if we can figure out how this comes off. It looks like so if you notice this point of moves along with the carriage. So this rod is attached to a geared shaft back here, which is driven through a gear off a geared track on the back of the carriage. So that's why this blocks here because this hit the end. But it looks like there's a little screw down there that if I take that screw off and swing this out of the way, I can pull the carriage even further and slot it off. And they even have a little tiny hole in the side there for you to access that screw. But I need a smaller screwdriver, so let me go get that. Now, I managed to get that screw off. You can see this thing is loose off its shaft now. So let's see. Oops. Uh, maybe this will work, maybe not. I want this to, oh. All right then. I should just unhooks off there. Fine. This Nope, it's still locked on by something. What could be holding it now? Let me take a look. Right, so I've taken these plates off. At least I think I am. See if the carriage will lift off the front then. a little bit. Mm. Looks like still no. It's looser now though. Alright, let me keep looking. Okay, it was just hitting on here. It actually does just slide off end like that. So that will give me an opportunity to clean this out and grease it. You can see on the back there is the tooth that slides on here that engages this. So that, well that probably still had to come off to get that out but anyway it's off now. Not sure if it had to or not. Anyway, so that's off. Let's see you now if this can lift up or if I have to take I have to take the rest of these screws out here. So this is the swing loaded thing for that. Come on. Right here. Better screwdriver for this. Yeah. Alright, finally got it off. This had to lift up and a plate came out. Hmm. Figure out where that goes. I had to lift this up. And then I had to take another screw 
this screw out of the side of this mechanism here that was down in the back there. And the plate came off, leaving one gear on the side. So let's see now if we can slide this off, which we can. Okay, and there's a washer that it should stay on there. So this is the ripple carry for the counter. And it looks like all it does is the carry, I think. Not sure, I'll have to see where the actual um that fell out too. Where was that? That must have been in there. Okay, this this is the actual counting pin. So this slides along with that finger, and then each time this spins around, it's gonna turn it one well, it's kinda stiff this way, but turn it oops, turn it backwards. Turn it one position each time around. And that slides back and forth with that finger to whatever well, that's not a position, but slides back and forth with that finger to whatever position you're in. I can get one there. And then it counts at that position. And then this just does the tens carry. So you can see I kind of broke a piece of it out here to get that loose. But look at how it just expanded. So look how flush that one is. And look at this one just all expanded, puffed up all over the place. So what I'm going to do is break up the rest of this and hope that this shaft still stays together and that way this will be out of the way and it should turn freely and the only thing that will affect is you won't get tens carry from this last position everything else will work just fine and if you look at just how brittle this metal gets I'm not quite sure why only this one did it unless these other ones here aren't pot metal which would be kind of weird but you can just break pieces off. Well, I could get in there. They just crumble right out. You see all the how it's splitting in there. All the cracks in it, and it just puffs up like that. Same thing in radios too. They make different radio parts out of pop metal like the Chaz you the dial or different things and they just puff up and crack over time so I'll have to break the rest of that up and see if we can get it back together then I've got enough of it up that I'm convinced it's not going to cause any more problems just a little chunk left in there I'll give this thing a little bit of stability anyway I'm sure there's a shaft so you can see down there, there's a solid shaft that runs to the middle. But I'm not sure if the pot metal is the only thing that holds this from sliding back and forth. Or if it's fixed to the shaft. Regardless, it shouldn't hurt to leave that little bit in there. See, it's pretty far down. Pretty far down from the top. See, the other stuff had to like puff right out over the top. So that's down in the groove there. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. And see, so look how nice the other ones are. You can see these things are spring loaded. And those are the 10 carry things. So, if you saw my previous video about the Prince Vigo Model A, um, there are little, if I can show the right thing, there are little, um, on the back here, if it doesn't fall apart when I lift it up, these things, these things pop down turn this the right way, it should eventually pop down. Hold on. There it goes. See how it popped down? Those pop down, and then as the pin slides past them, this pushes the pin over to turn the next wheel one place, and then this pushes this back up. So that's how the ten, tens carry works. So all that's going to happen is now we're not going to have tens carry in the very first column. Not a big deal. Um, next thing I'm going to do is try and oil most of this up 
it's pretty sticky. This is supposed to be the thing for the bell, and you can see it's pretty stiff, not even barely hitting the bell. These are the cogs to latch the carriage. See, that sticks down when you push it down. That's pretty stiff. So I have to oil those. I'll clean this um, track off and see if I can oil that too. And if I can blow some of the dust out of here and squirt some oil in there. And then we can start putting this back together and see if we mess anything up. Now we've got some lacquer thinner in here. We'll see if we can clean up. Yeah, it looks a lot better. See all the stuff coming off of it. So a bit more of that and it should be alright. Alright, I've got the side back on. The uh, timing of this is important. This has to be pointed down like it is when it's in the rest position. Otherwise it won't um, count correctly. If you have this like you know off to the like up here or back there or something, then it's gonna mess it's not gonna increment at the right time in order for the carry to get picked up. Because this has to increment before the pins on the back pass to do the carry. Otherwise if this increments after that then you miss the carry, it won't carry over at nine. It'll carry over the next time. Um, I'll carry over at the wrong time basically. This will hit, this will go to zero, and then the next time you crank it, it'll carry over to the, to the um, next column, which is not accurate. But now, see, hit nine, then it carried right over to, to 40. If this was in the wrong position, it would hit zero, this, then it would go to 39, 30, then 41. Because it wouldn't pick up the carry at the right time. But that's back together, and that timing has to be set as you put the side on. So there's no way to adjust it now, or at least not that I can see, when with the side on. So that seems to be working. So the next thing to do would be to put the carriage back on. Um, and if you look at this here, you notice there is a notch here. Focus. So. This has to come off in order to take the carriage off because I'm pretty sure that's what the carriage hits this latch that to prevent it from sliding off the end. So we'll squirt some oil down there in that mechanism and put the carriage back on and see if we can actually do some calculations. Yep, finally got this back together. So I'm going to turn this crank. My counter goes forward. Turn it backwards, my counter goes backwards. Again, there's no carry off this column, because that's the one that was messed up. But if I go to, of course this is, this piece here will be held up by that when we put it back on. Go to the next column, I can go forward. You see it does carry. If I start zero and go backwards, it starts counting down. You know, the stop D10 is not very uh, solid on this machine. It's hard to tell when you've made a full rotation and should stop. See how I passed it again. You can feel it when it stops, but when you're turning, it's hard to feel where exactly it is anyway. I'm going to put one on here. See, now I'm counting up one on my accumulator. And that carries. The humidor should be fine because we didn't touch anything with that. It should be clear. It does. This clears. Alright, so I think we are good to put the covers back on now. Okay, so I got this all back together now. Um, not sure if I mentioned it before, but the timing on the gear down in there, you can see it right there. Um, you have to get, so I can move this over. 
Now that you get this piece, see the lip is almost straight down. It has to be basically straight down in order for it to mesh properly with these gears up here at the appropriate time. If that's not at the right place, then it is either going to jam up because it's going to try and add at the same time the carry is trying to go through, or it'll miss the carry because it'll add too late after the carry already went through or something like that. Um, I'm not sure what, I guess it, would, if it could also add too early too because there's actually two sets of levers on here, a double helix, kind of, um, because it uses one one spiral doing subtraction and another one doing addition, so I guess if you had this too early it would be interfering with the subtraction spiral that goes through first, or vice versa if you're turning it backwards for subtraction. Anyway, that has to be timed properly to mesh with these at the right time uh, regarding the timing of this drum. Because this, this drum spins... This, lot, this drum spins along with this, so the timing of this and the drum have to line up in order to make everything work in here as far as the carry and the counter here. Um, also, this rod, which is, you can see that, this rod, which is driven off a gear from the, back, the teeth on the back of this carriage, this has to be um, timed appropriately so that when the carriage is locked in a position, this rod is also locked in the right position. If you have that off, then this gear is going to be trying to like drive into one of these wheels or... Um, I think you know, this also, this tooth, if this is misaligned, this tooth will hit on these pins as this spins around. So this, the, light, the positioning of this shaft and the positioning of this tooth on the little cog here have to be timed appropriately or the machine won't work right. Um, now that I got it back together, we can take a look at the mechanism here. So we see these things slide. You can see as they slide, see the little thing pop up there? That's a whole ring spinning around. So if I set this on, oops, what was that? If I set this on, should be on three now, and I turn this, you see that gear pop up? I'm going to turn it backwards. It has our cam, so you can't turn it backwards, so hold on. I hold that, turn it backwards. Now watch this gear pop up here. See it pop up there? Now it's going to go down. It's going to hit three teeth, and then fall back in, so it only adds three to the accumulator. If I set this on five, now it's going to pop up and add five teeth, and then fall back down and continue. So that is the modified pinwheel design that Frieden came up with. Um, Marchand, Marchand's first calculators were pinwheel calculators. They used the same design as Brunsviga and Odner and I guess Thales, uh, Triumphator. Or some others too. They all use the same basic design with the pinwheel calculator. Um, I'm not sure if it was Odner or Brunsviga. Somebody sued Marchant because Marchant didn't license the patent appropriately. So, to avoid the lawsuit, Frieden came up with this mechanism so Marchant could continue to manufacture pinwheel calculators and not have to face patent infringement lawsuits. Um, I guess that's about it for now. We can put the cover back on and then do a little bit of math. Um, but it's just going to be the same kind of principle as the Bones Vega. The only interesting thing about this is the mechanism. And it's also kind of a nice little small package, too. Doesn't seem to... It looks... I don't know, it just looks smaller than the Bones Vega, even though it probably actually is about the same size. It doesn't have the huge wooden base that the Bones Vega had, though. Anyway, we can put the covers back on, though I think this may be in need of a paint job.
some missing paint, some rust, so I'm going to have to repaint that. The logo looks okay though. Hey, the box was right. Alright, so I'm not sure if I mentioned this would be probably from the 1920s. I'm not sure when they started making these. This is the model XL, by the way. You can see the serial number is down here. There's your serial number, XL and the number. Um, and this also is the same style of mechanism that would be used in the Archant EEG9, which is an automatic keyboard pinwheel calculator, which I have inside. I might show that a little bit later, though I have shown that previously. But I'll put the cards back on and do a little bit of math, and that should be about it. Well, in case you're interested, here's a rear view of the machine. Set some things. That looks a little bent. I don't know. Now if I let me get this in a stop position, if I move this all the way over and I carry off the machine, that bell should ring. That's gonna take a while. Let me just set these up to mine. I can. Wrong way. Let me try again. Okay, so I said the last couple digits to nine. Let's see what happens now. Did you hear the bell ring? Of course, I want to pass the detent again. Did you hear the bell ring? Same thing should happen if I clear this and go backwards. Bell ring for an overflow. Alright, so put the colors back on and do some math. All right, everything's all back together. You can see from my little pointer there, we are in the zero position, all the way on the right. So we can start by adding a few numbers. And you can't see that. So you all the way up. One moment. All right, now you can see it. The little number appears in the window up there that you're adding. And you just turn the crank. Maybe. It's not engaged. Try again. There we go. Maybe the carriage wasn't engaged quite properly. This has to be in the right position, otherwise it won't move, won't add. It'll block like that. You see the number that was up there was added in down here. This clears that. This clears this. And this clears that. So if we wanted to add a series of numbers, we can just put them in. nice smooth machine. This is our counter over here by the way. Count how many operations we have. If we want to do subtraction, we can enter a number. And then if we want to subtract say 73. By the way, the numbers are also here too, so you can either read whatever number you're pointing at, or just read the digits up there. And then you turn backwards and it subtracts it. Also it subtracts off the counter too. If you want to do multiplication, so you want to multiply 25 by 25, 25, and then we want to get 25 here. So we do 5, and 
There we go. 25 times 25 is 625. By the way, this just shifts over. If you want to do division, will be everybody's favorite. Do 355. Divided by one one three. So now we switch this. Oops. Maybe. Uh, why is that not working? Maybe that's it working. It's not working. Anyway, that should switch up for division. Alright, so you can see this lever pushes that rod back and forth, but it won't go all the way. Unless you rotate this just a little tiny bit. Oh, did it go? No, I think it went. See, now it won't go back. Okay, unless you rotate this a tiny little bit. Now it goes back. I'm not sure if that's by design. I'm not sure how I would have messed that up because the detent is all the way over here in this piece which I didn't touch. So I'm not sure if that's supposed to be like a safety feature. So you have to rotate that a little bit in order to do this or whether I did mess something up. I have no idea. But let's put it back together and see if we can do some division. Alright, so I got this all thing all back together. Let's do a demonstration. So we set our uh, number we want to add. Actually, first we move this all the way out, so that we're pointing at the zero position. Then we set the number we want to add up here, say 58. So you can either read it this way, 58, or 5, 8, read it that way. Then we turn the handle going down first, and that adds it to the accumulator. Also increases the counter each rotation. We can clear this. That way, set our next number, and it adds. We want to clear our counter, we just turn this handle, and we can clear our accumulator by turning this handle. Now, if you do subtraction, you go backwards. So if I add a number, like 54, and I want to subtract, say, 14, and I turn the handle the opposite direction. And I get the appropriate result. Also, the counter goes backwards for subtraction. If I want to do multiplication, say I want to multiply 25 by 25, I can move this over one position. Now, basically how you multiply on these is you enter the number as many times as you want to multiply it. So if I want to multiply 25 by 25, we're going to enter 25 25 times. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to turn the crank 25 times because you can move the carriage back and forth. So instead of entering 25 25 times, I can enter 250 uh, twice and 25 five times. So if I put 25 on here, now notice I'm pointing at the tens position in the counter. I want that to say 2. So right now, because notice that this is above the hundreds position here, I'm going to be entering 200, 250, because it's essentially adding a 0 in this column. I'm going to enter 250 two times. See, I did that. I have 500 now, and then 2 here. Now if I shift over, now I'm going to be entering 25, and I want to do that five times. So now I have 25 times 25 is 625. For division, it's kind of the same idea, except instead of subtracting in a, a set number of times, you're counting how many times you can subtract it. So for division, we move this all the way over. We want to set this lever for division to make the counter count up when we do subtractions. So in order to do that, we have to rotate this a little bit. Rotating the wrong way. 
There we go. Rotate that a little bit to slide this up. Again, I'm not sure if that's a design or if I put it together wrong. I'm not quite sure how I could have put it together wrong to get just that off because that is that is set by a latch in the carry drum, but the carry drum is keyed on the shaft, so I don't see how that could have gotten out of time. But anyway, it's just a little thing to move this a little bit, slide that up. So we're now in division mode. We're going to enter our first number here, so we'll do the favorite 355. And we'll add that in. Clear the counter. And then one, one, three. Now, I want to subtract until I have an overflow. Um, when the carriage is over this far, the bell doesn't ring for an overflow. So we just have to watch this and see. So we're going to subtract. So I got an overflow. I'm going to add back to clear the overflow and shift over. Same process. Got an overflow. So now the bell rang. Now sometimes they overshoot because the detent on this is so light it's pretty easy to overshoot, then you have to add twice. See, so that's on over shot, so now I have to go and add twice back. Because you can't, once you start the next cycle, you can't go backwards. You have to complete that cycle and then go back twice. And now we're at the end. So you can see that 355 divided by 113 is approximation of pi. This is your little decimal point and you set that. Uh, we're expecting one whole digit, so we just set it here for um, appearance's sake. So, um, that's a little demonstration of this machine. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little look at what it looks like inside this machine and a little repair there. And now you get to see how it works. So, thank you for watching.